The following video describes an adaptive and prescriptive management approach to aquatic plant control that highlights the Idaho State Department of Agriculture's 2008 grant-funded Ponderay Lake and River Systems Eurasian Water Milfoil Control Program. There are many issues associated with the Ponderay Systems Eurasian Water Milfoil Control Program. Eurasian Water Milfoil is spread over more than 92 miles of shoreline within the lake, tributaries, and river system. Consequently, it is crucial to properly identify areas within this watershed that have been invaded with Eurasian Water Milfoil and how to control the distribution of this noxious plant. It is essential to determine the types, amount, and frequency of herbicide treatments that are needed in flowing water that varies from low to upwards of 75,000 cubic feet per second. It is important that herbicide treatments are applied at the proper depth where the Eurasian water milfoil is found for more effective herbicide aquatic plant contact time. Otherwise, surface herbicide treatments often result in marginal to no effectiveness or control in some areas where water movement and depth dissipate the herbicides. In other words, it is important to target aquatic herbicides to the plant beds to increase effective control. The approach selected to deal with Eurasian water milfoil control issues included a pre-treatment survey. This survey documented Eurasian water milfoil infestations and provided GIS data files of the infestations to pinpoint and support aquatic herbicide treatments. Water exchange evaluations were conducted by Dr. Kurt Getzinger's research team from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Environmental Research and Development Center to collect data on water flow rates in specific areas of the system. The data collected was utilized to evaluate potential herbicide contact times to support the selection of herbicides to meet the most effective contact exposure times. To be able to assess the, the water exchange, we use a tracer dye that is a fluorescent dye that's approved for use in surface waters and in natural waters. It's an in in inert product, so it's not biologically active. In other words, it's safe to use in these situations. And simply all we're trying to do again is to determine when you make a, uh, a dye application into the water, you would, you would do it in a way that you would simulate a liquid herbicide application. So we'd use the same equipment, the same techniques. We're looking at how that, her that dye disperses throughout the water column from the, from the bottom to the surface and how long it takes to become equally distributed in the water column if it, or if it does. We're also looking at, we're also determining where it moves within the plot and outside of the plot. If there's any, so far we're finding very little movement over the last few days that we've been monitoring outside of the, uh, the boundaries of the plot. So that's telling us that putting this dye in the water is telling us that the herbicide, the potential herbicide block would be staying in a localized position and not moving all over the lake. So that's a good indication that, that uh, herbicides would be targeted properly where the milfoil is and not be drifting to other parts of the lake. So the dye gives you a simulation of that. We, we've done studies in the past where we've done correlations between the concentration of the, of the dye and the concentration of the herbicide in the water column, and there's an excellent correlation between the two. So whatever this dye is doing in the water, that pretty much tells you what the herbicide would do when you inject the herbicide. Because we use very low levels of the dye, we only treat it about five to seven parts per billion in the water column. That's what we're putting into the water. Of the, of the red dye. We use an instrument called a fluorometer that uh, operates in a way that can allow us to read the dye down as low as 0.1 parts per billion. So even though we're putting it in at a pretty low range, we still have a, a wide, fairly wide range to monitor the dye as it dissipates and dissolves into the water column. 
And all of that information then, once we crunch those numbers, will be useful to folks that are operationally going to put herbicides in an area to say, since we understand the water exchange characteristics better, we can now pick the herbicide that's going to match with that and we can, we can do a better job of putting that herbicide where the plants are. So the overall objective then, the bottom line objective from an operation standpoint is, ideally we would be using less herbicide, we would be getting better control of the target plant, so therefore we wouldn't have to go back in and treat as often. And that also saves time and money. A lit line littoral zone treatment system was developed to place the herbicides within the weed beds at varying water depths within the littoral zone where plant growth occurs. These efforts significantly help to reduce herbicide use and improve plant control effectiveness. We're up on the beautiful Ponder A, Lake Ponder A in uh, Bonner County, uh, Idaho. Uh, I'm working on the Eurasian Water Milfoil program. We got some good uh, shots testing this lit line system the other day. Um, I was going to go through it a little more right now. We have uh, a, a couple sites up here where some mixes of uh, uh, endothol, aquathol K, and uh, 2,4-D, and mix sites with uh, uh, triclopyr liquid and aquathol K. There's been some uh, some good research done back in uh, Minnesota by Dr. Madsen and uh, some of his colleagues on um, using a combination of a systemic and a contact, the aquathol K, triclopyr, aquathol K, 2,4-D on uh, milfoil early season, um, which seems to knock the milfoil without uh, affecting any of the natives. And then on tracking, we have three systems. We have just a little uh, Garmin. We have this Fruno um, where we can zoom in and, uh, and we just have bottom lock here, which is just giving us a positive bottom. And this is just a uh, depth so we can see the plants um, coming up in the water column. And then we'll zoom in and uh, use this system for tracking. This has our position, our elevation. Um, our speed, there's a bunch of pages in here. It has our product, Aquathol K, our uh, weed are, what's going out, um, our target rates. Um, then we'll go back to the map page. We can zoom in and then you can see the some of the lines we ran earlier. So we're just gonna spin around here and uh, and we'll do a run through this, uh, this site so you can see actually how this thing works when it's in a, an operational mode. Um, and then one thing here is our water uh, water levels are changing every day due to activities with the core dam. So every morning we have to re um, reprogram our uh, our uh, average depths um, because with the system we're treating the bottom half of the water column uh, with these mixes. Hey Brad, move up here a little, Brad. guidance system is nice because it has this arrow going out that kind of keeps it's not like a field where you just drive a straight line. Post-treatment surveys to document herbicide treatment effectiveness resulted in an adaptive and prescriptive approach to aquatic vegetation control. United States Army Corps of Engineer water exchange evaluations were integrated into the treatment protocols to accurately determine contact and exposure times for herbicide selection. The lit line littoral zone treatment technology resulted in the reduction of the amount of aquatic herbicides required for control by up to 50% in some areas, with increased efficacy over conventional treatment technologies. Up to 97% control was achieved in some areas, compared to an average of plus or minus 80% using conventional aquatic herbicide treatment methods.
conventional methods also require double the amount of aquatic herbicides than the lit line system required. The biggest, the biggest benefit of uh, the dye treatments on Lake Ponderé is, is to save the taxpayers money and, and to create a safety factor uh, that, uh, as far as uh, the Eurasian milfoil control. We want to we, we want to use less herbicides, we want to do it more efficiently, and we want control of the weed. We want to do all of these factors as soon as possible to get done using the herbicides. That is the ultimate goal. Uh, so we want dead weeds. And the dye data is uh, changing a, a guessing process into a factual process. And so we're really excited about what's going on. Dr. Getzinger's dye uh, program here is is changing a, a guessing uh, program into a factual program. Whereas we know we're finding out that the uh, the exact timing of, of and placement of the dye uh, will help us use the exact amount of herbicide for a, a known period of time will be the right concentration and we can use less of the herbicide and get accurate control. Therefore, we get premium efficiency and efficacy of the weed and not have to retreat. Therefore, we save the taxpayers a lot of money. That is the best that anybody has ever done in aquatic weed management. And, and, and that's what we're striving for. And this data is extremely exciting for that because it's never really been done before that we know of. And we've been had to guess because we haven't had this kind of information. So we're really excited and we're really glad that they're here to help us do that. And so we have a lot of tools going on here to really back up what's going on in North Idaho to uh, wipe out this massive infestation. And we just can't say enough about all this help that we have and the data that's now come available. Through the implementation of an adaptive and prescriptive management approach to aquatic plant control projects, the 2008 Ponderé System Eurasian Water Milfoil Program costs were reduced by approximately $269,000 and a resulting 2008 program budget surplus.